Welcome to New Realities. My name is Alan Steinfeld. Each week on this program, I introduce people to what I feel is an evolving spiritual tradition in this country. And many of that, that information, many of these people uh, are bringing a lot of Eastern knowledge. Tonight's guest is someone who's studied the three great traditions of the East, the Indian Hindu tradition, the Chinese Taoist tradition, and the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. So I'm happy to that Oscar Sue is here with me. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Alan. Those are really the foundations, I think, for the spiritual teachings of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of Western stuff, too, but as far as what we know is Eastern mm -hmm. spirituality, the Indian, the Tibetan, and the Buddhists, right. the Tibetans. And so uh, you started out as a Tibetan student, mm -hmm. and then you went into the Chinese Kunlun, and then the Hindu. Uh, what do all these three traditions have in common, first of all? Well, they all um, have a long history, and they are, they're all Siddha traditions. They're Means. all traditions of um, mm, mm, people seeking self-perfection. Uh -huh. that uh, through their practice um, go through a continuum of <coughs> achieving you know miraculous powers um, in not you know as the point per se yeah. but as uh, markers or indications of their progress yeah. on the path and um, as Siddhas the m many of them uh, were unknown They're in society or you know, reclu recluses, you know, hermits in the mountains or in the, you know, Himalayas. But the ultimate point of these traditions is to uh, uh, gain enlightenment, mm -hmm. awakening. Um, mm -hmm. There's also an immortality mm -hmm. aspect of that. But the mm -hmm. ultimate point of these mm -hmm. traditions is, sure. is what? <coughs> is enlightenment. Which means? Uh, which means freedom from one's own uh, karma. From from the self imposition of of um, an uncontrolled mind, uh -huh. you know, the the manifestation of cities is in in some sense a reflection of the degree of mastery you have over mind, uh -huh. because you can control reality to the degree you are free within uh -huh. your own mind. So I mentioned the cities because it demonstrated you know where they were. How much control they had over their reality. Right. So a city would be levitation, invisibility, um, mm -hmm. flying through the air. All these things are, and you've seen these, right? I've what, seen some of these. What yeah. have you seen so people know it's a reality? Mm, I've seen, uh, for example, <coughs> pulling someone across the room with, with just the, from a distance. With their chi, with their energy. Um, yeah, with with one's own mind, uh -huh. you know the uh, <coughs> the amount of power that there is in in a certain center in the mo in the you know what we would call the head. Yeah, um, there's a, a near infinite amount of power there. But <coughs> we have to f learn to focus it. You have to learn how to uh, open it. Uh huh. <coughs> and this is sort of what you also teach. Mm -hmm the power to open those abilities inside of us. Mm -hmm. You do something called embryonic breathing, mm -hmm. which is the breath that um, fetuses have inside the womb, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, talk about that. Talk about that. And then how to open up that power. Okay. Well, what I teach is how to open the door to the power, mm -hmm. or opening the gate to city. And it refers to the opening of the center <coughs> in the <coughs> in the upper Dantian, as the Taoists call it, mm -hmm. called the Valley Spirit. Spirit. They have mm -hmm. lots of different names for it. Mm -hmm. um, mysterious Pass, mm -hmm. Tricky Gate. Um, Where is it located, actually? Well, if you take your, if you take the front of the ears, mm -hmm. or, or, and you were to draw a line connecting the two, mm -hmm. okay, and you aligned it with the top of the head, uh -huh. okay, and you went straight straight towards the center, yeah. you reach a, re uh, a region, and because it's, um, you're talking about a cavity, uh -huh. an energetic cavity, it's not just a point. You know, it starts out as a point, uh -huh. but to open it, 
you can actually create a larger chamber that encompasses the third ventricle, the pituitary, the pineal gland. Oh, because I thought it was the pineal gland that was at the very center of the brain. It's the closest structure oh. to, to... But it's more energetic... It's an energetic cavity. Oh, I see. And it influences the physical structures. So you teach how to connect that point inside the head in order to... In order to essentially return... Uh, in order to, to allow oneself to access one's, you know, original nature, uh -huh. that circuitry, subtle energetic circuitry that uh, enables you to um, really progress quickly mm -hmm. and to, you know, naturally evolve mm -hmm. by almost awaking a dormant intelligence. Inside that's part of, of us. Yes, that's part of your consciousness. Mm. Yeah. But it's sort of like once you're born, you're s that consciousness tends to fall away over time. Right. And particularly around puberty at the age of 16 is when there's a, a dramatic switch. Right. So what happens to s human beings is they, they lose more and more of their connection to that original circuitry right. and they flow into a different um, direction. Uh -huh. A direction dominated by entropy, and so they lose their life force over the years. They get older, and they lose their connection to their um, to what is within them. So how c we can get this back by doing these exercises, this embryonic breathing, which is connecting to that cavity inside of us. It's the main way that the three traditions begin the path. All three traditions do it that mm -hmm. way. That's interesting, isn't mm -hmm. it? So sure. it's maybe beyond those traditions mm -hmm. and it's a, just a that, that's sort of the commonality of those three traditions which right. basically our human ability to tap into our own power right. I mean, see I'm interested in the root yeah in, in in looking as far back in time as I can right because you know traditions only have certain time you know hi right. histories they only go back so far right but there are ancient civilizations that yeah. were on this planet, an ancient wisdom that we've inherited. Uh -huh. Each tradition is has a piece of the pie right. of that original, you know, corpus of knowledge. Right. So, <coughs> looking, for f you know, looking at all three of them, you get a sense of what proto tradition or proto wisdom informed each of them as mm -hmm. they evolved along their particular specialties or lines of specialization. And you feel, and I feel, it's definitely possible for the humans to achieve immortality mm -hmm. in the body mm -hmm. through certain types of siddha, breathing. Through the breathing. Through the breathing. Through the practice. Now, you studied biology, mm -hmm. and we talked before how you really feel there's a biological uh, basis for immortality and for, for this embryonic breathing, because you're not breathing with your lungs, you're breathing with some other part of yourself? You're breathing with your acupuncture points and channels. So you don't need to take air or oxygen in through your lungs? No. So where, so explain what you said in biological terms, how well, we get energy? If you study the function of the body, yeah. the body relies on ATP. ATP. Which is, which is a small little chemical uh -huh. made of three phosphates and a sugar. Okay. Okay. And the breaking of the phosphate bonds liberates energy that is used to drive all the chemical reactions in the body. I see. Enzymes, you know. Mm -hmm. So what you really need is ATP. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. ATP is made in the mitochondria, which is something that we inherited from Eve. Right. Something that, that <laughs> only comes from our mothers. Right. The, it's a sort of a cell within a cell. It's right. the energy center of the cell. Right. It's the mitochondria. It has its own DNA. It has its own, you uh -huh. know. So it's almost a self-functioning uh, entity. Uh -huh. But it's the power factory of the body. So the energy in our body is made from the mitochondria uh, working with the ATP. Mm -hmm. So we think we get that from food. And air, right? Absolutely. In the in what the Taoists call the postnatal circuit, after yeah. you're born, you have to metabolize energy through eating, through the digestive tract. Right. So <clears throat> when you eat, it breaks everything down into its uh, smallest possible units, and they're fed into the mitochondria. Right. Where the mitochondria have an electric circuit. Mm -hmm. It has a uh, electron-based circuit. 
Mm -hmm. through the so-called electron transport chain mm -hmm. and it also has a proton circuit mm -hmm. through um, so-called the chemiosmotic proton pump mm -hmm. so you actually have the electrons going one way and the protons going the other way mm -hmm. now when electric charge a negative charge moves one way and a positive charge moves in the opposite direction you have very interesting possible phenomena a and that creates energy you're saying through the through the coupling of mm -hmm. these two electrical circuits yeah <coughs> you <coughs> you have the um, an electrical uh, electrochemical mm -hmm. circuit that is coupled to the phosphorylation of ATP. Wait, so if we get that from food, but if we're not eating food, where do we get that electrical power from in, in this tradition? So where would we get this from? So if you look at uh, chi or prana, yeah, okay, from a yogi's perspective. It feels like it has a very strong electromagnetic component. Yeah. You know, like a very strong electromagnetic. When you do Tai Chi, you feel sort of electricity mm -hmm. running through. So it's, it's electric. Especially when you meditate. Right. So <clears throat> you actually become like an uh, electromagnetic dynamo. Uh -huh. There's a channel called the belt channel, and it winds all around you like a solenoid. The dynamo. The dynamo. Yeah. But you have to open it up. Uh -huh. Most people just open up the one here. But th there's one that wraps all the way around. Oh, all the way around. All the Is way that the dymo also? Yes, that, ah. that's the extension of the dymo above and below the, the waist. Oh. See, oh. That they don't teach this normally. They don't. No. So when you open up the entire belt channel, then you become like a solenoid. Oh. If you've ever, you know, played with solenoids, they have these, uh, they have electro, their magnetic fields go like this. Uh-huh. You know. So... <coughs> you can your whole body becomes energized uh -huh. and you can run the the battery of the mitochondria uh -huh. just electrically so and that's how so by opening up these centers in here you create a, a greater electrical field and opening up the belt channel you're bringing in energy see we're we're the universe is connected to us yeah but most of our channels are closed Right. So we don't actually pull in as much energy as is actually available to us. Mm -hmm. And there's also the space-time continuum. What about that? Well, you can directly tap into the energy of the space-time continuum. How would you do that? Well, in the central channel, at the level of the, the chakras, mm -hmm. there are bindu points. There are... In know, the Hindu tradition. Yeah, Hindu we call them Bindu. Or Marta point. Mar Marma. Marma is out here. Oh. But inside, they're, they're Bindus. Mm -hmm. They're like nucleation points. Mm -hmm. If you think of like... Uh, they're not different than acupuncture points. Though. No, they're different. They are different. Yeah, yes. because they're, they're portals to, to the energy, to the, to the Wuji, to the, the, you know, the great womb. The original substance that created all of us, uh -huh. you know, that we're emanations of. So they're like, uh, they're like tiny rings. Right. And in order for you to open these bindus, you have to fill them with energy. Okay. And you, so you have to fill, fill, fill. Uh -huh. Only by filling do they become open. And when they become open, they can hold electricity. When they become open, they have a tendency to close. So you have to keep them open. Mm -hmm. But once you stabilize them so that they're open, then they're like white holes. Mm -hmm. Then the energy that's within the space-time continuum, now you have access to. Energy in the space-time continuum meaning that there's energy feeding the present moment every second. Yes. Okay. Feynman, for example, you know, yeah. he, he developed the theory of quantum electrodynamics. Uh -huh. Um, so we'll talk a little physics. Okay. So Feynman calculated that the minimum energy density of of empty space, like say one milli one milliliter of it, uh -huh. which is a centimeter by centimeter by centimeter, mm -hmm. <coughs> is ten to the fifty two grams per centimeter uh, of cubed of of a power of energy. Yeah. Of that pure means fifty two zeros. Mm -hmm. One after the and uh, the other, and then one. Mm -hmm. So there's more energy, saying one cubic s inch of space, right. cubic centimeter of space, than there is in probably a million atomic bombs. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, 
the amount of energy that's in a cup, uh -huh. in a, just an empty cup, yeah. could evaporate all the oceans of the world. So a cup is not empty, uh -huh. even if it's empty. So this is the uh, zero-point energy field? This is zero-point energy. So, I mean, scientists have been trying to tap into that. I've interviewed Hal Putoff, who's mm -hmm. working for uh, the mm -hmm. government and um, the Defense Department, other people trying to tap into that. And you're saying the masters of the Far East have been able to tap into this resource, mm -hmm. energize their own body, achieve mm -hmm. immortality, mm -hmm. And, and become ma enlightened mm -hmm. teachers, and, and probably are still alive today. Mm -hmm. Have you have you many of these immortals? On the my my Nyingma Dzogchen master is a Siddha, mm -hmm. which means he routinely like puts his hand into rock and makes handprints, or mm -hmm. he uses his head, uses his bottom, his thumb, to, to you know, his his foot. Mm -hmm. He's just you know you could take a solid piece of of like a boulder, mm -hmm. and he just You've seen that? Yeah, just like these handprints. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So you've seen all that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, he's just pushing it or, in? in but yeah, or he takes his staff and just puts it through the whole boulder as if it's, it's butter, like a knife through butter. Because he can control the elements. Because he, with his mind, he, he, with his mind he realizes it's a projection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like the spaces between the... Everything is mostly space. Right. It's not really solid. It just appears solid because of the mm -hmm. electromagnetic fields when you... Right. Because of the way reality is lensed for you, mm -hmm. you know. So he knows that, and he puts it... And he can manipulate time and space. <laughs> it's part of him. Right. Mm -hmm. So are you learning to do that? This is the training, you know. Uh, in our tradition, and I'm talking about the, the Nyingma... You know the Tibetan part. Yes, of that. yeah. The Tibetan tradition, we have, for example, in one monastic tradition, <coughs> the some water. The, yes. Yeah. Some water. The Katok tradition. Yeah. A um, hundred thousand yogis, who achieved rainbow body, which means, at their when they die, they don't leave a body behind. They dissolve it completely. But into why life. die at all? I mean, why, why, why... Different traditions have different um, value systems. I mean, if you think you can achieve that level, like Babaji, I think, didn't die, took yes. his body with him. Beca <coughs> because there are different uh, world systems, uh -huh. different uh, galaxies, different places to go uh -huh. than just this one. Um, and so they... They choose based upon what they want to do. Mm -hmm. like some people really love this planet so much, mm -hmm. or the people, mm -hmm. you know, with, with whom they have had relationships with mm -hmm. over lifetimes, that they, they want to stay. And other people just go out into space. Some people explore. The unknown. Yeah. And that's from different traditions, I guess, or different preferences, actually. Mm -hmm. the, you know, for example, the Tibetans like to reincarnate. They may achieve a high level of mastery, but mm -hmm. they can't really teach people from the light body because only certain people can see your light body. So there's that Suzochin tradition, and then in the Chinese, there's the Taoist, there's the Kunlun, the fire yeah. and water, mm -hmm. which is an alchemical tradition. Last time I talked to you, we were going to get into the alchemy of that transmuting fire into water. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about that too? Because so <clears throat> postnatally, one of the biggest. Uh, when you're born, one of the bi your biggest problem is that the whole becomes divided. The whole let's that you are. <clears throat> yeah. If let's say you say let's say you say zero point energy is the zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then when a being is generated, it bec it's it's the one. It becomes the one. Right. So the ho there's a there's a correspondence of still wholeness between the zero and the one. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you actually born? is that the zero and the, that the one begins to divide itself. Right. And you create polarities. Male, female, you know, young and old, left and right. Mm -hmm. You have two eyes, you mm -hmm. know, two mm -hmm. hands, two feet. Right. But energetically, uh, or more to the point, the, the consciousness or, or mind and life separate. Mm. It's because consciousness and life separate. Life hovering down here in the abdomen and consciousness here 
in the uh, in the you know upper Dantian, mm. the mortality mortality arises, arises from that separation. From that separation. So mm -hmm. and also the sun and moon channels divide off from the central channel. That's in the Hindu. The, is that this uh, Shashuma? I mean, mm -hmm. I, yeah, the, yeah, those three channels. All, all these things are talked about in all three traditions. They just have different names. So it's all the same. I mean, the basic yeah. human immortal physiology is the same. We've it's just same. Uh, labeled it differently in different traditions. You're right. So the Kunlun, the fire water, is to bring the consciousness back to the life force. Is that? It's to reunite life, reunite life and consciousness. To reunite all of these polarities. It's because karma is only possible when your energy moves in the sun and and moon channels, oh. in the side channels. Oh. You only perceive duality because your energy runs in that circuit, oh. these two side channels. So you merge the dualities into oneness, into the central channel. Mm. You bring life and consciousness back into the, center. into the heart. And how do you do that? Well, you unify bliss and emptiness. Uh, you have to generate a, a, a mind, the bliss, a great blissful mind, mm -hmm. so, <coughs> so that it's... In, Think that the mind becomes captured in the object. When you're when you're blissed out, it's very hard for you to focus on anything else. Right. So it's very hard for you to be distracted. So the the greatly blissful mind, when it meditates on itself, mm. okay, realizes and recognizes itself, its own nature, it withdraws the illusion. It reabsorbs the uh, projection. And wow. Yeah. So is there a certain technique that will allow us to? Or is this something we have to fi find in our This is all a manifestation of what I'm, what I, what I'm talking about. The, oh, the opening of the uh, ancestral cavity. You know, uh -huh. or there's, there's so many names, but essentially, you know, around the third eye chakra, uh -huh. there's a, there is an energetic center where the, sh where the Shen or the spirit or consciousness or mind is, r is rooted. Uh -huh. w the primordial consciousness is within the central channel. But it's normally asleep mm. because your consciousness is running through the karmic channels of your body. The sun and moon channel. Yeah, outside the central channel. So we go from this outer to the inner to the central channel. Right. We it's like flipping the reset but button on the computer. Uh -huh. The computer is running a program. The right. human computer is running a program. And it will run that program forever until you change the program. Right. So in order to change the program, you have to... Uh, flip a switch internally. And, and you do this with this embryonic breathing. Right. That's the key. Well, the embryonic breathing comes out of activating the center. Uh -huh. The center is the key. It opens all the doors. So once you, you, you uh, start activating that center, eventually you will naturally achieve embryonic breathing. It's not a forced thing. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, like, uh, practice, you know, a lot of complicated maneuvers, mm -hmm. it, it will occur by itself. It's a simple, or if we give our bodies and minds enough space to allow it to happen. It is, um, it is as natural as breathing is to you right now, uh -huh. but it belongs to that other circuitry that's wow. dormant. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's great. So we get caught up in the karma, but it, when you talk about the central channel, is that the same as the kundalini awakening? Is that different, the central channel? Well, the central channel is a very complicated entity. It has many layers, many sheaths, mm -hmm. and it has many th frequencies within it. Kundalini is one, <coughs> one of them. Um, would you also say that um, tantric sexual activity will um, activate that in two people working together for that goal? Absolutely. If you know how to practice tantra correctly. Which Give us a look, because everyone throws that word tantra around, and no one really knows what it means. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say <coughs> correctly, but I should say that um, within the trainings that I've received... Yeah, tell me about that. So there's um, the Taoist mm -hmm. training, which in, in my s the school that I'm a teacher in, mm -hmm. is pr <coughs> primarily energetic. Not physically. Not physical. Okay, I oh. see. <coughs> But um, there is a class of physical teachings, uh -huh. you know, which you're aware of. Yeah, the red tantra, they call it. Or, or the, uh, 
the white tigers. Oh, the white tigers in the Chinese tradition. The yeah, jade yeah. dragon. Jade dragon, right. Those are also <coughs> physical teachings. Mm -hmm. Also from Kunlun. Yeah, from the... From the, the, the Queen Mother of the West. Oh, the Queen Mother of the West. Right. Uh, which, yeah, the, primarily the white tigers teachings. But it's those from the Queen Mother. It's from the Queen Mother of the West. Right, right, from right. From Kunlun right. Mountain. Right. So anyway, what's the actual technique? Uh, what is it? What is Tantra? So it, within Kunlun, if yes. I'm, you know, we can touch uh, different acupuncture channels. Yes. And if you have the transmission, yes. then we can circulate energy between us. That's, that's really one level. That's one level. That's one level. The other level is we do it without touching, uh -huh. simply with our minds, uh -huh. and we circulate energy. Another level is I transform myself into a... Uh, you know, into my spirit light, into a, uh, into like a ball of ball of light, ball of energy, and I actually go through the third eye point uh -huh. into your central channel, uh -huh. and then come out. I see. You know, uh -huh. uh, there's, so there's many different levels. Uh huh. And these all help increase this um, activation of the this immortal essence, right? I mean, that's at a a yeah. At a certain point, you know, emotion is really just energy in motion. Yeah. So when a f a s when your f the frequency that you're working with mm -hmm. is attuned to strong emotions, it merely amplifies that frequency within the central channel. Mm -hmm. So if you're not chasing the, um, the if drama, yeah, if you're not chasing the the, the grasping aspect of um, yeah. sexuality, even sexuality will merely enhance your practice. Uh -huh. So you, once you've reached that level, then it doesn't matter. So, you know, so celibacy is not a part of this tradition. Celibacy is a part of the tradition. tradition. It's uh -huh. part in the beginning. Uh -huh, to build the you energy. need to build enough energy you know, in order to practice to the level where, where these things don't matter uh -huh. and, they all, and every, everything begins to enhance your practice. Wow, very nice. Uh, we're just about out of time here, but I mean, we've touched on a lot of things, and I, maybe we'll do another show, uh, a little bit of another show. Um, but w you're based out of Hawaii. Where can people find you? Okay, so um, I should give them the co contact info. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So they can reach me. You can look at that. You can tell them. Sure. That's about you. Is there a website? Email. Give them your email. Email is... Oscar, K-H-S-U, O-S-C-A-R, K-H-S-U, at sbcglobal.net. Okay, great, yeah. great, great. Um, and I'm, I'm teaching this Sunday. Yeah, I don't know when people will see this show, yeah. but um, it's Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. Thank you for watching. Um, see you next time. I just want to continue with a few more questions, Paul. You're not in a rush, are you? Well, if you want me to interview. Oh, did you want to? You didn't say you did. I just... Well, yes? Yes? yes. What? Well, no. I just want to, as we were talking about the tantric traditions, I know in Tibet they have a different form of tantric. Can you talk about that? Because in this yeah. conversation, yeah. I... I I still feel it's like it's been a little all spotty, over yeah. spotty, and mm -hmm. I want to just pull all these traditions together. I really want to get it. I want the audience to get it. So, but talk about the tantric tradition in Tibet. So Tibet's an interesting uh, syncretic tradition in the sense that they had a lot to try to integrate, mm -hmm. and Siddha traditions are not always as, let's say, monastic and celibate as. Um, as uh, Buddhism mm -hmm. is sort of <coughs> favors because of the way Lord Buddha lived his life. But he was married, Buddha. But he was married. So, you know, there are all kinds of different stories depending on which tradition right. you come from. The tantric traditions of the Siddha focus a lot upon the tantra that he practiced when he was in the palace. Buddha? Yeah, Lord Buddha. Oh, I didn't know Buddha practiced tantra. Yeah, like for example, in the Chanda Maharoshana Tantra, <coughs> to some degree, the Chakra Sambara Tantra, that's what they talk about. Sexual Tantra. Oh, yeah. Of Buddha. Yeah. Really, you right. see all those Buddhist monks right. that are so... Um, right, so the, the way in which Buddhism evolved, especially mm -hmm. in Tibet, was the foundation was the <coughs> monastic tradition. Right, right, right. So <coughs> Buddhism is much more um, 
uh, much more of an ascetic tradition mm. uh, than you you would see with uh, maybe the other um, the other tantra traditions. It's interesting. Buddhism came out of India, and India really there isn't really focused on Buddhism at all. I mean, you don't really get that from India, and yet, and 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 why do you think that is true? Is there something within the that Hindu culture that, um, or well, Buddha, like like sort of Jesus, denied or not denied, but renounced the tradition he came from. He said, "You don't need that." You know, when they asked him, "Wow, are you are you a god? Are you this?" He goes, "No, I'm just awake." That's what the Buddha's answer was for mm -hmm. that. So, uh, anyway, no, but let's pull all these traditions together. So, okay. Um, so you're saying so yeah. you know each of the traditions gives you certain ways of looking at things mm -hmm. and actually different entry points and <clears throat> it's you know you um, I I don't <laughs> I think that they all have valuable mm -hmm. you know uh, valuable things to offer the right. key thing is do you understand what it's all aiming towards and what the purpose of no. it is. Tell me. Um, that's rhetorical. <laughs> no. It's rhetorical no, because know, it's, um, it's like, uh, <coughs> if I don't understand, you know, what the purpose of celibacy is, or, yeah. you know, within the phase of training that I'm in, mm -hmm. <coughs> if I'm not um, aware or keen of, you know, what the different levels of practice and my capabilities and my limitations are, then, then it's just uh, it's just a, a a box per se. Right. That I'm, I'm, I'm a label and a dogma. I'm working and a within. But if you understand, you know, all all the way these things relate, mm -hmm. then <coughs> uh, uh, you can proceed with confidence. You know, uh -huh. there is sexual tantra in Buddhism. Uh -huh. It's just practiced in the middle levels. You achieve, you achieve what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. You achieve first, so that there's a an escalator of energy that rises from the the base of the spine to the head. Mm -hmm. That way, that when they practice sexual tantra, they just shunt the sexual energy onto the escalator, and it naturally goes up mm -hmm. and activates that cavity that's mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. head. Uh, but I think to kind of pull it all together in a sense, what you're looking at and what you said before is the essence of a physiology that's been hidden in these hidden tr secret right. traditions that every human being has. They all work with the same substrate. Yes. <coughs> Some of them are better at certain parts mm -hmm. than others. Okay. So that inner core of us is to activate this essence that will give us this bliss and this eternal life and these powers and like your teacher and and the idea is to practice and discipline and learn the to techniques. Reactivate the primordial. And you do that with this. Mm -hmm. this the sleeper must awake. That's why Buddha said I'm awake. Because uh, he activated those channels. Uh -huh. So it's getting the techniques, the understanding uh, to will activate those o awakened channels. And then you can control the dream. Uh huh. <laughs> then you can. Like this, people in the Sufi tradition mm -hmm. that that said, like, yeah, the master is someone who from, can control the dream like most people can when they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. So. And then control this dream. Uh huh. So you okay. No, that's it. I mean, that's what we're here to do. Control yeah. this dream. And awaken. Yeah. So it no longer controls you. Right. And you're on that path. Yeah. So it's like I, like I told you, my, <coughs> my Dzogchen teacher, yes. Adzun Pailo, this is the, the beginning of that path. Mm -hmm. And the end? Is enlightenment. And then beyond that, immortality? Uh, immortality is actually before. <laughs> before enlightenment. Or you can be immortal without being enlightened. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Well, there's more conversation to have. And we'll, right. We'll and the path doesn't end. So past enlightenment, there's more things to learn. Uh huh. Past <laughs> enlightenment sure. and, and achievement. All right. I mean, there's so much to explore here. But uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know. Just clear that out. So okay. I mean, I mean, I know. I think it's the cat. I think it might be. <coughs> Paula, do you? Want